Welcome to the fourth segment of the CPA Mentor Orientation. After having completed the first three segments, you know what it takes to get prepared for your mentoring relationship, understand what is required to establish your relationship, and know how to build upon that foundation. You are now ready to make progress in your relationship with the future CPA. Together, the five segments will help you understand what is involved in mentoring a future CPA. You'll recall the CPA mentorship framework we previously presented to you. In this segment, we'll focus on making progress in your mentoring relationship as you continue to meet on an ongoing basis. You may have been meeting more frequently over the course of the first six months of your relationship. As trust and rapport are established, you will likely be able to meet less frequently, particularly in instances where the future CPA is steadily progressing and developing. In the previous segment, we showed you how you can continue to build upon the foundation that you and the future CPA have established in your relationship so far. Beyond the first three meetings or so, once your relationship has reached a steady state, you're ready to meet with the future CPA on an ongoing basis. Rather than simply focusing on building rapport and trust or providing your tactical feedback, the nature of your mentoring relationship becomes more strategic at this point with reflection playing a key role for both you and the future CPA. Prior to each ongoing meeting with the future CPA, you will want to make sure that you review progress that has been made since your last meeting. At each ongoing meeting, you will then provide guidance to the future CPA with respect to progression, with an emphasis on the enabling competencies. As each ongoing meeting draws to a close, you and the future CPA will decide what needs to happen between that point and the next time you meet, and, after each ongoing meeting, you will document the meeting in the profession's online practical experience reporting tool, or PERT. At this stage of the relationship, you are now ready to review the progress made by the future CPA in the development of competencies. The profession's online practical experience reporting tool, or PERT, facilitates this review. A mentor review is a request from the future CPA to meet in order to discuss competency development as recorded in the PERT. You and the future CPA are required to hold a mentor review at least semi-annually. You will receive an email notification once the future CPA has requested a mentor review via the PERT. You will then log into the system to access the future CPA's file. While supporting the development of the enabling competencies is the focus of your mentoring activities, you will still have a role to play with respect to the technical competencies. You will want to take a high-level look at the future CPA's progression towards achieving the technical competencies. Reviewing the consolidated summary in the PERT is a good place to start. The consolidated summary pulls together all of the future CPA's experience to date and, on an overall basis, provides a snapshot of the future CPA status with respect to meeting the core, depth, and breadth technical competency requirements. If, after having reviewed the consolidated summary, you have any concerns or simply wish to see additional details, you can take a look at the detailed experience report in the PERT and can further drill down into each of the specific technical competencies. The PERT contains detailed guidance on what performance of a particular competency looks like at different proficiency levels. You and the future CPA can refer to this detailed guidance when considering the appropriateness of the future CPA's self-assessments. Where you do have concerns about a specific competency, you can choose to document them by adding a note to that area. Future CPAs track their development of the enabling competencies by responding to five three-part reflective questions, with each question corresponding to an enabling competency area. Future CPAs also self-assess their proficiency level with respect to these enabling competencies. Future CPAs are not expected to answer all five of the questions in each experience report. Rather, they are only expected to report and assess those that have been developed in the particular reporting period. The PERT also contains detailed guidance on what performance of the enabling competencies look like at different proficiency levels. You and the future CPA can refer to this detailed guidance when considering the appropriateness of the future CPA's self-assessments. As a mentor, 
you will want to review the future CPA's enabling competency self-assessment in the PERT. Again, where you have any concerns relating to enabling competency development, you can choose to document them by adding a note to the specific enabling competency. You will recall from previous segments of this mentor orientation that you and the future CPA had spent some time during your first couple of meetings developing a learning plan. The learning plan acts as a blueprint for how the future CPA plans on meeting the profession's practical experience requirements. The learning plan is a living document and, once your relationship with the future CPA is steadily progressing, the learning plan will evolve. Future CPAs are required to answer the following summary questions in the PERT for each reporting period. Looking back at your experience captured in this report, in which competency area do you feel the most confident in your abilities and why? And identify key competency areas you will focus on developing or improving between now and your next meeting with your mentor. These questions act as an ongoing extension of the learning plan. The second question, in particular, prompts the future CPA to set specific development targets between meetings with the mentor. You should review the response to this question prior to your meeting with the future CPA as a means of considering progress against development goals. Once you have reviewed the future CPA's progress as documented in the PERT, you will want to consider a number of factors, including how the future CPA's self-assessments compare to the detailed guidance provided in the PERT, and whether the self-assessed proficiency levels seem aligned with the overall duration. For example, does it seem unreasonable that the future CPA has developed so many competencies at a level two in such a short time? Or conversely, would you expect the future CPA to have developed more competencies at a higher level given a longer duration? You will also want to consider what the implications are of any gaps in development. If the future CPA is not getting adequate exposure to the competencies, you might need to provide specific guidance. We'll elaborate further in a later slide. We have provided you with a high-level overview of key processes within the PERT. Our primary objective was to alert you to the kinds of activities you can expect to undertake as you begin to review the future CPA's progress on an ongoing basis. In this orientation, we did not provide detailed insight into the functionality of the PERT. However, the Interactive PERT User Guide will support you in navigating through each PERT process, from creating a profile all the way through reviewing future CPA's experience reports and documenting meetings. As we mentioned in a previous segment of this orientation, the guide is designed as a performance support tool. In other words, you do not have to read the guide in a linear fashion. Rather, you can use it to assist you executing specific functions within the PERT in real time. Once you're given access to the PERT, you can use the PERT user guide to familiarize yourself with the tool as you begin to use it. Once you've reviewed the future CPA's progress as documented in the PERT, you will want to provide guidance and feedback to the future CPA during your next meeting. Providing feedback is a self-reflective process that requires you to prepare in advance of the meeting. At this stage, not only will you want to coach the future CPA towards improving performance and effectiveness, but you will also want to proceed to strategic mentoring conversations through which true learning takes place. We have developed a number of resources to assist you in providing guidance to the future CPA with respect to their development, including the Facilitating Dialogue webinar that explores more fully how to provide guidance to future CPAs via mentoring conversations, the Feedback as a Self-Reflective Learning Process Worksheet, and the Essentials of Coaching, a six-module webinar series designed to assist you in coaching the future CPA throughout your mentoring relationship. All of these resources can be found in the Center for Mentoring Resources. For further support on how to provide guidance through strategic mentoring conversations, you might want to watch the Mentoring Conversations video available in the Center for Mentoring Resources. So far in this section, we have focused on the interactions between you and the future CPA as part of the feedback and guidance that is critical to mentoring relationships. It's important to note that you and the future CPA 
will also be liaising with the profession, both formally and informally. Periodically, we will seek out your feedback on the mentorship program through formal surveys. The purpose of these surveys is to ensure that the mentoring program continues to meet the needs of everyone involved. The mentoring contact at your local, regional, or provincial professional body is also available to provide assistance at any time. We encourage you to reach out to them whenever you need support. After providing whatever guidance is necessary to the future CPA through coaching and strategic mentoring conversations, you and the future CPA will also want to decide what the next steps will be. This might include specific areas the future CPA should focus on during the period until your next meeting. It might also include specific mentoring topics the future CPA wishes to cover at your next meeting. Next steps are entirely up to the two of you to decide upon. You will also need to set the timing of your next meeting. This can be done in the PERT. Recall that the profession requires you and the future CPA meet at least semi-annually to review progress. Therefore, it is important for you to document in the PERT that this meeting has taken place. The comment section of the mentor review enables you to document that the meeting took place, the results of the meeting, and any concerns that you may have. The future CPA will be able to read these comments, so it is also a good place to document the agreed upon development areas that the future CPA will be working on between now and your next meeting. A couple of scenarios warrant special consideration. Future CPAs that come to the mentoring relationship with prior experience may be further along in their competency development, particularly the enabling competencies. In these cases, the steps to continuing to make progress in your mentoring relationship are no different. However, the guidance and support that you offer will focus more on ensuring that the future CPA builds upon their advanced levels of development and continues to progress in an effort to meet the profession's requirements during the remainder of their practical experience term. In cases where future CPAs are not progressing, especially if they are not getting exposure to the required competencies within their current roles, you will want to encourage them to have development conversations with their supervisors. For example, they might need to seek out stretch assignments, have their position redefined, or change positions or employers altogether in order to gain exposure to the required competencies. Your coaching and feedback can support future CPAs in preparing for these types of conversations with their employers. We introduced you to a number of supplemental resources in this segment of the orientation. All of these resources will assist you in continuing to make progress in your mentoring relationship on an ongoing basis, including the Facilitating Dialogue Webinar, the Feedback as a Self-Reflective Learning Process Worksheet, the six-module Essentials of Coaching Webinar Series, and the Mentoring Conversations video. All of these resources are available in the Center for Mentoring Resources. We also introduced you to the PERT User Guide, which can be found in the PERT. You're just about done the fourth segment of the orientation. Let's walk through an exercise to assist you in understanding some of the content we've covered so far. Consider which of the following do not represent suggested additional resources you might refer to when making ongoing progress in your mentoring relationship. A. The Interactive PERT User Guide B. The Thesaurus C. The Facilitating Dialogue Webinar D. The Six Module Essentials of Coaching Webinar Series or E. The Mentoring Conversations Video The correct answer is B. While we do not dispute its general usefulness, the thesaurus is not a recommended resource for making progress in your mentoring relationship on an ongoing basis. A, C, D, and E are all incorrect, as each represents an additional resource that we suggest would be useful to you in supporting the ongoing progression of your mentoring relationship. Now that you know how to make progress in your mentoring relationship on an ongoing basis, you are ready to proceed to the fifth and final segment of the orientation entitled, Three Steps to Closing the Mentoring Relationship.